Fortune walk-around of Bill Angeloni's 1954 MGTF, where we'll take a closer look at this T-Series MG. Let's dive right in. From the VIN plate, we can deduce it's indeed an MG, open top two-seater that left the factory in almond green metallic and has the body chassis number 3204. The first 20 years of this TF's history are largely undocumented and the trail picks up in 1974 when it was purchased by Lowry Alexander in Santa Barbara, California, and the TF at that time was still metallic green. Alexander restored the car in 1976 to 1977 and changed it to the current black-red combination. A quick sidebar about this owner is warranted. After restoring this car, he got into the restoration business. That business was acquired by Moss Motors, where he worked on the corporate side of the parts department. Then after that, he went back to doing restorations up in Sacramento, California. While he had this car, he brought it to this 1976 and 1977 MG T-Series Gathering of the Faithful events. He also entered it in the first Santa Barbara Concours, where it was awarded a second place. Shortly thereafter, it was sold to the next owner who lived in Carmel, California. That owner commissioned a second restoration by Antique Auto Restorations of Seaside, California in 1998. It returned to the shop for freshening in 2002 before it was put on the market and sold to the current owner through Fantasy Junction in Emeryville, California in January of 2003. After just a few outings, Bill purchased the 5-speed Ford Sierra Type 9 gearbox and adapter kit from Pierce Manifold and installed it. After a few more long trips, the rear ratio was updated from the stock 4.88, bringing pinion, to a taller 4.30 unit from an MGA. After collecting a few more of these plaques, the engine developed head gasket issues, and on a hunch, local Moss distributor Skip Kelsey suggested Bill check the casting numbers behind the generator. Everyone had been under the impression that the brass number medallion that matched the engine number on the VIN plate was correct. But when Bill found the REF117 casting number, Skip's theory it had been updated to a 1500 block was confirmed. Why the wrong tag? Well, in California, registrations and titles in the 1950s often took the number from the engine block, not the body. To keep the paperwork in line, the medallions were swapped. And of note, this is not the only identifying data point. The chassis number 3204 is also stamped into the frame. A simple head gasket replacement turned out not to be the answer, and by 2005, the car returned to antique auto restorations, where an engine overhaul was completed and the Laystall aluminum head was added. This setup was reliable for many years and many 2,000 plus mile long road trips all across the Western United States. Home. Yeah, and we yeah. did a lot of long trips because from from Park City, Utah, to Sedona, to Seattle, to Portland, to all up and down the West Coast, we did nice. GOF runs. So we've had, in early years, we did this car a lot and uh, enjoyed, really enjoyed the car. During Car Week in 2008, it entered the Carmel by the Sea Concourse on the Avenue, where it received a second place in class award. And in 2016, Vintage Motorsport wrote a feature article on this TF. And right after the photo shoot, the engine suffered a crank failure. This led to a new billet crank and further engine development. At the time, Bill also ran another MG TF 1500 in vintage racing with Huffaker Engineering. So it was the obvious choice for the 2016 rebuild. Huffaker worked their magic, and the results of the machine work, a roller tappet camshaft, and the lay stall head is an impressive 91.3 horsepower with 96.8 foot-pounds of torque on the dyno. The car has covered about 2,500 miles since the rebuild. Let's go ahead and move on to the interior. Starting with the top, it's in excellent condition with no rips, tears, or wear spots. And the rear window is crystal clear. With the top up, you can see behind the seats where the stock engine crank lives and the side curtain storage area. Mm -hmm. 
the side curtains themselves are in good shape. The fabric material is believed to be original. The operation of the top can be described as British. Overall, the interior is excellent. From the Motolita steering wheel, to the condition of the upholstery, there are no standout flaws. Surrounded by a period aftermarket engine turn gauge panel, the gauges themselves are excellent too. Under the dash is tidy. The footwells are clean. And the door panels are in great shape. One notable modification is the door handle safety latches for the suicide doors. The tonic cover is also free of wear marks and is in great shape. This TF looks stunning on the road and up close, but let's put the paint and bodywork under the microscope to point out some minor flaws. The body tub still wears the paint from the 1977 restoration and has some age cracks under the right hand windshield post. and below the passenger door above the running board. There are three rock chips in the driver's door. The passenger door has a wear spot here on the inside edge where it meets the jam. There's a chip on the lower leading edge of the left front wing. The left vertical side panel under the opening bonnet has a few chips at the leading edge where it meets the grill shell. This area near the front release button and a scratch above the rearmost louver. Under the right opening bonnet panel on the bottom side, there's an area of small bumps in the paint, probably caused by a battery issue in the distant past. The windshield has one very small rock chip on the driver's side. Overall, the chrome on the car is excellent. Much of it was replated in 2005. The only flaws are some pitting in the fuel tank side cover panel band on the left side, and this one slightly wavy vertical in the grille. Here's a random demonstration of lighting and electrics. Dropping underneath, the new exhaust system immediately stands out. It's not a trailer queen, and the bottom side of the fenders are not polished for show. This is a driver. The frame, the outriggers, and the wood flooring are all excellent. There's the adapter bracket for the Mark 9 five speed transmission. Here's the rear end housing the MGA rear ratio. 
and the Kony tube shock conversion at the rear. The front end utilizes the stock lever shock setup. Check the auction gallery to see the details of the original tool kit. And paperwork, which includes brochures, manuals, and receipts going back to the 1998 restoration. wheels, and tires. And there are five of them. The center locking chrome wires are wrapped in 165 R15 Arizonian tires. This 1954 MGTF has a host of period accessories and mechanical upgrades that set it apart from many T-Series MGs and... And it's really a driver now. <laughs>